Now, I would like to address some churches in America today because someone previously mentioned the Family Research Council being designated as a certain hate group. We have to remember that the Family Research Council communicates with hundreds and thousands of churches every week. So as the American Family Association, probably the National Organization for Marriage. So there's a lot of churches out there who are getting the message that you see addressed in, in that video and one that Dean Hall spoke of so eloquently. And it's a, a message that is causing great harm to a lot of individuals. LGBT youth especially, but not just them, their families. If you think of the parents of young Tyler Clemente, what they've been through since his death, you get an idea of the pain that families can also experience because of this very message. Dr. Spearman mentioned the young man reaching out to him just last week. Two individuals reached out to me, said that they had been mistreated by their church. One of those individuals, a 18-year-old Matthew Finner, said that he had been forced to sit in a chair, had been slapped, punched, hit, and at one point even choked by members of his church. The bruises have healed, but the emotional and psychological wounds still gape. He's gone to local authorities to try to get some recourse. You have to remember that a lot of the court officials there in this community are members of that church. And they've told him they're not interested, that they're basically on their own. Spoken with the FBI, said the hate crimes legislation, the Matthew Bird Shepherd Act, doesn't apply here. And in fact, not even worth the paper it's written on. That was what the FBI agent reportedly said. Two weeks ago, I also attended a pride festival in a community. It was their first public pride festival in which they had gone to the downtown space, had been allowed to gather there. And they were extremely proud to be doing this for the LGBT youth and families in their community to let them know these are some of the positive messages you can hear. That morning, the police of this particular community allowed a group of about 12 very vocal and boisterous religious protesters with signs and a megaphone to actually come onto the midway of the festival and parade back and forth. And this was a small gathering being the first festival, a good beginning, but small. So you're talking maybe 200 feet of midway space, about the width of this room. And for four hours, those 12 individuals walked back and forth. You're going to hell. God's going to punish you. Homosexuality is a sin. And the police thought it was okay to allow them to invade their space in that manner. Just as the anti-gay religious industry, component of the Values Voters Summit, invades the societal consciousness today with their signs, plastered all over the media and on the internet, and the megaphone that they carry because of untold millions of dollars that they raise. And it's because in America today, it's okay to mistreat 
gay people, it's okay for churches to do that. It's okay to bring that emotional and psychological pain against a young person. And the reason it's okay is because we Christians have not stood up to those voices of the anti-gay religious industry. That's why it's continuing. That's why it has gone unabated for so long. And we sit back and we look at that church of Matthew Finner and say, how extreme. Or we look at the 12 protesters at the Pride Festival and say, that's not us. How rude. We're not like that. But in actuality, when you promote the message that homosexuality is a sin, you are sending the exact same message to that young LGBT person and that family. And I can tell you from being out there for the last five years that the pain and trauma that that inflicts on these young people. And if you can think for just a moment, what message would make a 12-year-old individual think that choosing death is better than growing up. That's the message that the anti-gay religious industry of the Value Voter Summit, that is the message they are putting out there. You go to their website and you will see that they ask churches to partner with them. I happen to be one of those individuals who once did partner with them. And I can tell you today, after coming to understand the harm that I unfortunately caused for many years, I am so very thankful that I was allowed to be liberated from that bigotry, from that prejudice, from that hostility. And that's the message that I want to take to my fellow Christians today. If a pastor or a church member ask you to partner with that message coming from those anti-gay religious organizations. Tell them that you do not want to make a mockery of your faith because a message that would cause that type of harm cannot be sanctioned by the Christian faith. Thank you. Mm -hmm.